Hi everyone, my name is Mikhail Oleksinko, I am Grandmaster from Ukraine, also FIDE trainer as well as PhD in Mathematics. And um, I would like to share with you one position that relatively recently surprised me a lot and I learned a lot myself from solving this one. So this is the position from game Marshall Lasker, New York, 1924. <coughs> this position when i was trying to solve the, the position says why to play and win and i remember how uh, confused i was when i looked at this position very unusual no pawns near the kings some open files hanging pieces the pawn is hanging the king is weak there's rook h2 check move there's queen takes e6 there's uh, i started to calculate the variation so the first line that is a uh, I think obvious, they need to, obviously needs to be considered as queen takes e6. And uh, it looks crushing. The bishop is hanging, uh, queen is approaching to the king. Uh, however, when you take a closer look, you would see that rook f1 is uh, suddenly black seizes the initiative. King f1 and bishop b5. And because the square on h2 is taken, the king cannot escape from queen c1 checks to the edge of the board. <coughs> so it actually happened in the game top grandmasters of the time did not find uh, the win for white and um, white played rook e2 and after bishop takes e2 queen e2 the game continued and ended in a draw although of course white keeps some initiative because of extra pawn but objectively it is a draw so so i calculated queen e6 and i saw rook f1 i was not happy with that then i calculated um queen h3 check there's queen h3, obvious check to consider, maybe it's a uh, linear mate, but there's queen h7, doesn't work. Then I considered knight e5, um, attacking the rook and threatening linear mate, but with only moves black is saving the game. Bishop takes e5, pawn takes e5, so rook is hanging and checkmate is, well, not checkmate, but the uh, huge threats are coming. Rook h4, controlling the h file. Queen f2, a follow-up, the queen tries to get there or here, and the only move for black is queen e7, which everything is under control. And I remember, like, my eyes were like, I have this move, I have that move. It's very easy to get confused in positions like this. So I want to offer you, uh, not a trick, but uh, some sort of a system that I learned from um, a grandmaster and really good coach and author, Jacob Bogart. And uh, Agard, in his books, in many of his books, he has the idea of three questions that I found really helpful, specifically in this situation. I remember how I, even though, according to him, you should use those questions for positional and strategic play, but very often they are very useful to help you guide your thinking into a good direction, even in open dynamic positions. So the three questions goes as follows. Where is the weakness? or where are the weaknesses? So I asked this question, what is weak in this position? Uh, the king is weak on h8, right? So the king is weak, the pawn is weak, lots of weak things, but the king is weak, basically. That's the main problem in black's position. The king on h8 has no cover whatsoever. So, okay, we established the weaknesses. The next question is, which is my worst placed piece? Which of my pieces is least involved into the game, into in this case, into the attack. I looked at my pieces, I have a clear winner. The bishop on f1 is just standing there. It's uh, having no influence on the attack. So, so you identify the weaknesses. In this case, it is the king. Then you ask the question, which of my, which is the worst place piece? But basically, which of my pieces need improvement the most? Bingo, there's a bishop. And the third, also very important question, what does my opponent want? That's quite a general question, but in this case, in several lines, uh, black is taking on f1 this bishop. For example, if I try knight h6 with ideas, I don't know, rook g8 or improve the knight, there's rook f1 followed by bishop b5, same idea, extremely unpleasant. So what does my opponent want? My opponent wants to have rook f1 check, dragging my king into, king into the center, distracting me from my attack. When you, see, when you answer these questions, they really guide your thinking into a good direction. And in this case, if you can find the moves that answer three questions, like in this particular scenario, 
you take the worst placed piece, in this case the bishop, you aim it towards the, the weakness, which is the king on h8, and you prevent your opponent's idea. You kill three birds with one bullet. So, bishop to d3, the move I would never consider, it's too slow. I want some checks, I want some threats, but bishop d3 and suddenly another piece enters the attack, there's no rook f1, queen h3 is a huge threat because there is no queen h7 anymore. So the only defense for black is bishop to h5. But it really struck me when, when I was like getting lost, there were so many checks and active moves, how do you not get lost in this situation? These questions could be very helpful. So, and I used them and immediately the solution was very clear and uh, it was all immediately obvious that this is the move. This is the move. I know rook f1, queen h3 is coming, another piece entered the attack. So bishop h5 is uh, basically the only defense from queen h3. And white continues with knight to h6. And now mate in one is coming, right? So this is hanging. The pawn on e6, by the way, is still hanging. Nothing has changed. So black plays rook f8, which is the only move. And here there's one move that is winning and one move that looks like a win, but in fact it's a draw. So I suggest that maybe you can try to guess or pause the video if you wish. So um, it is very tempting to play move queen to g5, right? There's no checks to white's king, right? Queen g8 is a huge mate in two threat. Queen h5 is the threat. Basically, all white's pieces are aimed towards the king, and white's king is perfectly safe because any check loses material. And it may seem crushing. How do you defend from queen g8 as well as from queen h5? This position looks resignable, and even if I gave this puzzle to students, I say, no, find a defense. There is a defense. It's still very hard to find. So here I can recommend Sometimes if you don't see a defense whatsoever, feel like resigning. Sometimes, first of all, identifying the exact threats. So in this case, two threats, queen g8 and queen h5. There's nothing more, just two threats. Although they, it feels overwhelming. Um, and then you check every legal move available in your position. If you feel like resigning, there's no rush, right? You can resign any moment you want. But it's better to check, maybe you miss some move that normally is a really poor one, but in this uh, desperate scenario could help you. So two threats, and there is one move that saves the day, and it's desperate move, bishop to g6, which under regular conditions no one would even consider. Come on, there's three people, three pieces attacking my bishop. What do I achieve? Nothing. I just, it's, it's, I'll better resign. In fact, the thing is, the, there is a difference. If queen takes, which is an awful move, queen c1 and white gets checkmated, right? So, what about bishop g6? But there's no threat anymore, and black has time to play bishop f4 move, attacking the queen and freeing the queen c1 square. White can go knight f7 check, and surprisingly, black goes king g7, and the position is equal. Well, white has some edge, but it's equal. The queen is hanging, queen c1 is coming, and there's no mate, and the game continues. The best way for white is to go rook to c2, counterattack the queen, and then take the bishop. But then black goes queen g7, white takes queen g6, and this is by no means lost. I'm not sure what is the best move for black here, even with the engine. It's either queen d4 check, or queen g6, and then followed by king g7. In both cases, black has really good chances too secure a draw. But checking le every legal move, if it can possibly help against the two threats, you will see moves like bishop g3, bishop h2, but this is just losing material. But once you consider bishop g6, it should it should become relatively clear that this my, this is my only chance to get. And, ap and apparently that can save the game after this. So that's why queen g5 is not winning, but when it comes to calculating the precise win, I suggest starting with the most forcing move available. It's either check or a capture. In this case, knight f7 check wins again. Knight f7 followed by queen h6. 
So what can black do? Black can only play rook f7, queen h6 check, rook h7, only move, and bishop h7. And again, there are no checks. There is no check to white's king. And queen, uh, now the retreat of the bishop would, and the bishop is hanging. Black should just resign now. There's no check. You can only, and queen h7 doesn't work because of queen f6 followed by mate. So that was the solution. So actually you can learn three things. The three questions in the starting position. Where is the weakness? Which is my worst place piece? What does my opponent want? And they really help you to see a candidate move. And when it comes to converting, when it comes to finding the only defense available, if there is any, checking every legal move could be a good idea. And when you feel like winning, you shouldn't give time to your opponent. Queen g5 gives a threat, but it gives time to your opponent to give some checks or make intermediate moves. However, after knight f7, rook f7, queen h6, takes, takes, well, still feels like a time for black, but there are no checks and no, uh, no moves to save the game. Thanks for watching. That, that would be it. Hope to see you in the future. Bye.